Hello, my beautiful people. How are you today? Welcome, welcome. I hope uh, a lot of you just finished the 530 workout with the West Seattle crew or you knocked out one of the workouts earlier in the day or you did one on your own schedule as long as it got it's done. That's all that matters. So thank you for tuning in tonight. I'm going to share a couple. Hello, my beautiful people. Ah, hold on. Back to it. Um, my setup is such that I get a setup so I can kind of see where I'm at and see what's going on. And then sometimes I forget to turn the volume down and I start hearing myself talk, which nobody likes to do. But anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight I'm going to share with you a couple basic nutritional uh, pieces of knowledge that I think are going to be super helpful for you um, that a lot of people get wrong. And then uh, I want to chat a little bit around uh, counting calories. Should you do it? Should you not do it? How do you do it? What's the point? Um, and then just be available for any nutrition related questions. I've had some great conversations with people via text and Facebook Messenger and email and all different uh, mediums answering some questions. And uh, I, I want to go over a couple of those because hopefully if they help somebody else, they may help you as well. Um, so hang tight here for a couple minutes as we uh, let anybody else filter into the group. Um, and then we'll dive right in. And then, stand by. Um, also, I, hit me with any of your questions. Type them in the box uh, down below as you're watching. If you've got a question around what you should be eating, what you shouldn't be eating, how you should be eating more, how you should eat less, anything around nutrition, fitness in general, while we're here, uh, I am here for you. I am a resource to help you out. Uh, I came here specifically to help to do this video. So if you've got some questions, um, now's a great time to pop them in there uh, so I can help, okay? So while we're waiting, um, let me know you're here. Say hello, give me a little wave, give me a little thumbs up. I always appreciate a bicep curl, you know me. Um, and, uh, and like I said, we'll wait just a couple minutes, to, a couple other folks to jump in, and then I'm gonna dive in into kind of the nutritional, one of the big, big, big mistakes that a lot of people make on the nutrition front and how you can easily avoid it and start getting some uh, better results because of it, okay? Hey, John, how's it going, man? You doing well? Uh, that, was a, that was a fun workout we did last Saturday for that group. Looks like it's happening again. So brace yourself. It'll be another good one. We're going to slowly make them a little bit more challenging, so that should be fun. Uh, who worked out today? Let me know. Let me know who worked out with one of the uh, online workouts. Give me a, give me some sort of notification if you got in a workout today. And then, if, and if you didn't, then uh, tell me when it's going to be happening or what in the world has possessed you not to work out today because we should be working out. Let me know in the comments. I want to know what's going on with it. Nice. All right. Some people chiming in about some of those workouts they did. I like to hear that. I like to hear that. What do we got there? Nice. So uh, one of the questions, and I'll, and I'll get to that. It's a great question. Um, cut, like somebody indicated that they tried to cut out some food and they like just couldn't, and maybe they lasted for a little bit. But guess what? They ended up going back to it. Man, I'm in the same boat for... Um, I don't know, chocolate chip cookies, banana bread, all that delicious stuff. And I'm going to tell you how to address that 
and the best way to address it for a long-term fix. So that's coming for you. It's a great question. Um, nice. Got Cindy's workout in. Ah, oh, Nora, good boy. Happy birthday to you. That is awesome. Happy birthday. I won't sing for you. Um, you wouldn't want that, but happy birthday. Enjoy your day. And yeah, get back after it tomorrow. I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear that. All right, Julie, got that workout in. I love it. Oh, hey, Suzanne, I appreciate that. Um, we're doing our best, you know, uh, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or texting or emails. I just, people respond to different mediums and uh, I want to make sure that we're available however we can meet people. So I appreciate that, though. We're, we're, we're certainly working hard on it, trying our best. Hey, Ashley, speaking of uh, delicious cookies, what about that home delivery service? Very grateful. Thank you very much. Um, the whole family loved those cookies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Uh, rice cakes. Good. <laughs> yeah. They're not as good totally, but, uh, they can certainly do the trick. Um, so for those of you just popping in, if you've got a question on the nutrition front, pop it down. I want to make sure I get to it. A couple people have mentioned a couple things, um, and we'll dive in. So 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and I'm going to dive into some of this content with us. Okay. Um, Right. Let me see if any other questions popped up. I can. Uh, yeah. What Suzanne say? Hey, good to see. Hey, no, I appreciate that. We're doing our best, and it's a team effort. We've got people editing the videos and posting them, and obviously the coaches rocking, doing all the workouts. People incorporating pillows and stuff yesterday. I mean, it's it's next level stuff. It's awesome. So here's what I want to cover today: a couple of things, because this is something that I typically do with my one-on-one -on -one clients that oftentimes yields fantastic results. And before I tell you exactly what it is, I want to tell you kind of, <laughs> explain my, my kind of uh, fun reasoning behind this. So um, it comes, comes from quantum physics, okay? And before I lose you, it's the simple understanding that once you start to notice something, right? Like once there is an observer of a specific reality, once somebody is watching something, then one of two potential scenarios happens, right? The famous one is like, there's a cat in the trunk and it's like, is the cat dead or is the cat alive? And until somebody looks in the trunk, like you don't really know the answer, right? It's potentially both. And so when we talk about calories, until you observe, and another way to say observe would be to track, until you are tracking your calories, you don't know if it's too many or if it's not enough, right? If, we, if the cat's dead or if the cat's alive. Until you have a visual component of how many calories you're consuming, there's no real way to know. Now, eventually, that does not become true. For example, I don't count my calories anymore. For a while, I kept an eye on them to see what they're at, but now I've been doing this long enough, I know how many calories it, approximately that I'm at, right? So the first thing I wanna talk about is tracking calories, right? Like, should you do it? Should you not do it? Why does it work for some people? Why does it not work for other people? Okay, what do we got here? Uh... Yes, okay. So question there was, is there, is there an effective way to lose weight? And definitely this is gonna come into play. So um, when, we talk about, when we talk about calories and tracking, the idea, what my recommendation around tracking calories, should you do it, should you not do it again, is if you haven't done it before, I'd recommend doing it for a week. Give it a week to 10 days. And what that week to 10 days is gonna do is give you some context around how many calories you're actually consuming. Because I promise you this, 
naturally, every single person that I've ever met in my entire life, myself included, I always overestimate how many calories I burn when I exercise, and I underestimate how many calories I eat when I'm eating food. It's just a natural human thing to do, right? Like I'll go for like, you know, oh man, I, I, I went and did this workout and that was probably like a thousand calories, right? I'm like, well, reality wise, it was like closer maybe to like 300. Or, you know, it's like, all right, time for, you know, a bagel in the morning. I'll put just like a little bake, just a little base level, level of butter, and then I'll add the peanut butter on there, right? I'm like, ah, oh, it's probably, you know, 150 calories, no big deal. Like, now the bagel itself is 150 calories, then you add in the butter, and then you add the peanut butter, and then you add that extra helping of peanut butter, and then I add the spoonful of peanut butter before I ate the bagel, and next thing you know, like, it's a lot more calories, right? So naturally, we always overestimate how many calories we burn, and we underestimate how many calories we're actually eating. So, if you want to track calories, do it, but don't do it for more than 10 days, because it gets really tedious, and it, and it, it potentially can kind of take the joy and the fun out of eating, which oftentimes a lot back in the day, our uh, social life was around food. And so you wanna make sure that you, you can do whatever you're gonna adjust nutrition wise, it needs to be sustainable. Some people can track calories indefinitely, and there's lots of apps, and I'll talk about that, that make that process easier, but it can feel a little bit tedious. That's why I recommend seven to 10 days, okay? So, stand by. So if we're going to track our calories, we're going to track our calories for seven to 10 days. And what's that's going to, what that is going to allow us to do is have a better understanding <coughs> of how many calories we are consuming on average, because that's what's important. We want to know what our average calorie consumption is, right? And then once we know that, once we know how many calories we're eating, we can decide one of two things. Let's say that over the course of the week, we average it out, we divide it by seven. Over the average week, make things easy, we're eating 2,000 calories a day. Good. Now, is 2,000 calories a day too many? Is it not enough calories? It depends on where you're currently at and it depends on what your goals are, right? So let's imagine we're eating 2,000 calories on average a day and our goal is to lose weight or our goal is to lose body fat. Awesome. That's some people's goals. For other people's, it's not. But let's imagine that that might be somebody's goal. So if they're eating on average 2,000 calories every single day and they want to lose weight, then they need to eat slightly fewer calories or they need to up their exercise, right, exponentially, especially if they're already exercising. Let's assume this person is eating on average 2,000 calories a day, but they're already working out three to four times a week. Okay? We're not going to add in a bunch of extra workouts for them. Okay, hopefully that's better. So, 7 to 10 days, you're eating about 2,000 calories on average, and you want to lose weight and you're already working out. It's gonna be hard to add more and more and more and more exercise, right? You've heard the saying before, you can't out-train a bad diet, and I have given it my damnedest. I've tried my hardest from doing a 24-hour race to running every four, four miles for every four hours. You simply can't do it. So then that means you need to eat slightly less calories, okay? What that means is you need to eat slightly less, less calories if you wanna lose weight. Now, well, how many calories should I cut out, right? And how drastic? Now this right here is probably is one of the top three to four mistakes I see people make after meeting with about 10,000 people. This is the one that people make the most frequently and this is the reason that losing weight and adjusting their nutrition becomes the biggest challenge is they cut their calories too drastically. So somebody, if right now you're eating 2,000 calories on average, let me back up one, one second. So if you're gonna track calories, if you're like, hey, you know what Ian, this sounds like an idea worth trying. <laughs> Don't worry about it, G. Um, if, if you're tracking calorie, if you decide to track calories, um, the best way to do it is MyFitnessPal. It's a free app you can download on your phone, and it's super intuitive, and it generally knows just about every possible food you can put in your mouth from, hey, I'm getting ready to bagel to a frozen pizza. It knows it, it knows the calories, and it plugs it in for you already. So you just plug in what you've been eating all day, and then it just adds it up, and it's like, oh, you're 2,000 calories. So it will track it for you, okay? 
So you've tracked your calories, you're 2,000, you're like, I can't work out anymore, I don't have the time, I don't have the energy, uh, you know, my body's already tired, I'm already training a lot. Okay, then let's look at calories, maybe we need to trim some calories out if you're looking to lose weight or burn fat. But you can't just drop down to 1,500 calories, you can't just knock 500 calories a day off because number one, you're probably gonna be hungry, which is gonna make you grumpy, which is not gonna put you in a position to stick with it very long. Also, if you don't have the calories you're used to, your performance is gonna suffer a little bit, right? If you've been working out frequently and all of a sudden you don't have the same amount of calories, you don't have the energy, uh, and, you're, and you're, like, you're, you're starving yourself, you know, hopefully not literally, but you're like, oh, I wish I could have that, but I can't have it because I'm trying to cut calories, it makes it super, super tough. So my recommendation is just a subtle slash on the calories. You take out 200, you take out 250, and that's not a whole lot, and it's, it's certainly not a noticeable amount in terms of your hunger level. It might be like one, you know, for me, it's like if I want to cut 200, it's like, okay, I'm not having a bowl of cereal before bed. I don't need it. I just do it because it's like the kids are to bed. My wife and I finally have a few minutes to ourselves and like we'll chalk in the kitchen and I'll have a bowl of cereal. It's like that's nothing to do with me being hungry or needing the calories. It's just like a habitual thing. So that's an easy thing for me to cut out if I wanted to reduce those calories. Or let's go back to my bagel in the morning, which is actually usually around noon. Like. If I'm gonna have a peanut butter bagel, I don't need a base letter, base level of butter on there, right? Like, if I cut that out, that's almost 200 calories, right? Like, so there's a lot of easy ways to find those 200, 250 calories that you can cut out. So, that is the number one mistake, is like drastic cutting of calories and you just can't stick with it because you're hungry, you're low on energy, you're angry, right? So that's the first thing you wanna do. Um, so step kind of one is like, track your calories because once you do, <clears throat> you'll know what the heck's going on and then you can make some adjustments. And the chances are, there's also the potential, like I've been trying to put on some weight, like <clears throat> I want some muscles, like I need to gain some, <clears throat> I need to gain. That means you need to be, you know, what we're talking about here is if you're cutting, uh, the other side is like, hey, maybe you're tracking your calories and you know, you're only at like 900, 1,000 calories. Like, holy shit, like you should probably be eating some more calories. Like you're probably hungry. You probably need to add some more calories on there to make sure you have enough energy, to make sure that you're able to perform for your workouts, all those different things, right? But again, we have no idea, just like we don't know about the cat in the trunk until we start tracking. And again, I track seven to 10 days, right? Because that just gives you, you know, you track one or two days, you know, you're conscious of it, you eat less than normal, you give yourself that full week and you can spread it out, okay? So hopefully everybody understands this concept. Pull my eraser down. Notice this eraser, anybody, have any idea where this might came from? Maybe the sleeve? I don't know, maybe. It's all right. Okay, so we got that basic idea of why we might want to count, count calories, at least to start with. And again, maybe you need to do it, maybe you need to do it a little bit longer to get an even better idea and become intuitive with how many calories you're eating. Sometimes it takes people a little longer, sometimes it takes people a little less. I know hundred percent that the, my client, my clients that I have that are keeping track of the client, their uh, calories and they send me a screenshot of the total that they've had, they lose weight. Like they lose weight one, two pounds a week, totally. <clears throat> and then when they stop, it usually goes back up, right? Um, the other reason is like, you know, you're going to write stuff down. So you're just more mindful of it, right? You're, you're more mindful overall of the nutrition. So the next thing I want to talk about is like, well, okay, so if I'm at 2,000, I'm eating 2,000, like how many calories should I be eating? I understand it's a little bit less. How many should I be eating? Let me check these comments here. Cool. Thank you guys for filling folks in. So how many calories you should eat? I have my own kind of calorie calculator that I like to use. And again, I'm making some kind of uh, a broad assumption here. Let's imagine somebody wants to lose weight. Um, now, if so here's what you're going to do let's say you want to lose 10 pounds okay let's say you want to lose 10 pounds somebody mentioned they got that quarantine 15 going right quarantine 15 so how do we drop uh 10 15 pounds <clears throat> what you want to do is let's assume you weigh let's assume somebody weighs 175 pounds okay I don't know if you can still see me from over here let's let's assume somebody weighs 175 pounds now this person, they're like, oh man, I just, you know, there's no right weight, right? But they're like, you know, I just, I, th I feel like I would feel better at 165. I feel a little bit more confident in my clothes and I feel a little bit more comfortable out of my clothes and I just, I feel like I'm carrying some extra weight. I get it, right? Especially these days. It's, 
I saw a funny quote that said, uh, the longer I'm forced to stay at home, the more homeless I look, which, nah, I don't know. Anyway, so you're at 175, but you're like, I, I feel like, I feel like I'd be more comfortable at 165. I feel like I'd be at a healthier weight if I was at 165 pounds. Great. Okay. So you want to be at 165. Gotcha. So that's a 10 pound difference, right? Easy peasy. Um, so what we want to do is take your desired weight. Okay, is take your desired weight, which we decided, which you decided was 165, and multiply it by 12. All right. So we come up with 1980 calories. Okay, so this amount of calories would be the amount of calories, if you ate that every single day, that would get you down to 165 pounds. Now, Ian, you're thinking to yourself, but what about exercise, right? Like every time I work out, <clears throat> every time I do one of these awesome online workouts, I can, I, I can, you know, I'm burning three to four or 500 calories, I'm going for this long run for like five miles, I get to subtract those calories and eat those back, right? No, 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 you don't. That's biggest mistake number two, is people assume, right, like I mentioned at the beginning, that when you're exercising, you're burning way more calories than you are, because you're not burning as many as you think that you're actually burning, and they add those back in, and they feel like they can eat those back up later in the day. So whether you're exercising or not, this is the formula, okay? Now here's what's interesting. <clears throat> Let's pretend your goal, all right, so, Hopefully this makes sense for you. You take your current weight, you subtract, if, you're, if your desired weight is 165, then you take your desired weight and you multiply that by 12, and that gives you your daily calories, okay? So two important things here to follow up with that. Number one, it is nearly impossible, nearly impossible to eat the same amount of calories every single day. I, it's super hard, right? It might, it might be easier now that you don't have a lunch, uh, you know, like a, a lunch with friends, or you don't have a happy hour, or you don't have a work trip, or you don't have, you know, brunch with some friends. Those real world scenarios, I know there's a real world now, but those real world scenarios makes it super challenging because every day is different, right? And you don't know what's going to be on the menu when you go to that work function and you don't know what your friend's going to make and you don't know what you're going to have on that date. And so your calories can be all over the place. <clears throat> and that is totally fine because this is another big mistake people make is trying to eat the exact same amount of calories every single day. And it's super hard because it's Saturday and you want to have some French toast, right? And you want to splurge a little bit or it's Taco Tuesday and you got to have all the tacos and that's totally fine. So this needs to be the average. So what that means is on Monday, you have 1,900 calories. On Tuesday, you have 2,500 calories because you had a couple extra tacos because they're delicious, enough said. Wednesday, you're back down to 1,900. Thursday, you had, you know, 2,000. And then at the course of over the week, it just needs to add over, it just needs to average up to the 1980. Now, what a lot of my clients do is during the week, it's a little bit less, and then in the, and so they leave room on the weekend for a little bit more, for an extra glass of wine or for, you know, the appetizer when they're going out or whatever, when they used to go out or whatever it might be. But this is the average, okay? So here's what this looks like. Now, if you, let's pretend you're still 175 pounds, but you're like, I'm 175 pounds, but 165 is not even where I want to be. I want to be at like 135, okay? Totally, I get you. So that's, you know, a significant amount more weight. But what you're gonna do is you're still gonna eat the same amount of calories as the person who just wants to be at 165 pounds. So, because what I'm doing, because if what we did here, and here's how this, here's why this is significant. You weigh 175, you wanna be 135. If you start like, if you start eating like a, a person that weighs 135 pounds, <clears throat> I'm done, if you start eating the amount of calories to sustain 135 pounds right now, you last three days, three days, because what that would look like would be 135 times 12. Is 1600 calories. 
that'd be super hard for you to sustain right now going from being 175 pounds and usually eating the equivalent amount of calories to be 175 pounds to just drop down that suddenly oh man you'll lose weight super fast that first week and if you can make it two weeks oh you'll lose so much weight but then you'll gain it all back and probably a little bit extra because you're just gonna be hungry and you're gonna be angry and you're gonna be like this isn't for me I can't stick with this you know what <clears throat> everybody else can do it but I can't do it right that's what you'll convince yourself because that's just that doesn't work so if you're at 175 pounds <clears throat> and you want to be down to 135 pounds Make it gradual. Your first shift is 165, which we said was like 1,900 calories, right? And then once you've lost 10 pounds sustainably, a couple pounds a week, right? If that, then and you're there and you're like, hey, this is good. Then you can make the next jump down to 155, right? 155 times 12, 12, which is 1850. And then you just slowly decrease them down and as your body adjusts, as your metabolism adjusts, as you get more comfortable and used to it, okay? Super, super important not to drastically cut those calories. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Hit me with a question on that if, if you need some follow-up that doesn't make sense on the calories. Okay, so next, and this is going to bring me all the way back. And by the way, is this, is this helpful at all? Is this helpful for you guys? I hope it's helpful. So the next thing, and this, this goes to Samantha's question, was like, was it that she wanted to cut out cheese? God, why would you want to do such a thing? <laughs> Maybe because it's really high in calories? Sure. So do you use this number to sustain weight? Do you this number to sustain weight? You might mean, yeah, so um, I think your question, yeah, so so it's, it's, yeah, you would cut it 10 pounds at a time. And, you know, like for some people, maybe that big jump in calories is like even too much. Like that's not a big jump. Maybe it's like, just cut it five pounds at a time. You know what I mean? Like take your time and get it done right and never get that weight back on. Or maybe you're like, hey, I can like, you know, the difference between five pounds isn't a terrible amount of calories. So maybe it's like, hey, I could do 15. Like <clears throat> the more weight you have, if you're a hundred pounds overweight, then, you know, you could cut, you could start eating the amount of calories 15 pounds less versus 10. But the, you know, as that gap gets narrower and narrower, you'll start to notice more and more the calorie drop. So you can start with a little bit bigger if you have a, you know, further to go on your journey, but as you get closer, then you'll notice more and more. And then eventually, you know, the sustainability part, good. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, so eventually once you're, yeah, eventually you could eat at that 135 times 12 if that's what you wanted to be and you would be, and you would sustain that. Now, um, you know, and then once you're there, and this brings me to my next question. So what this says is the calories are more important than what you're eating. So this is like the big, this is like the big, like cool reveal, right? For most of us, for most of us, the amount that you're eating is going to have a bigger impact than how much you're eating. Now, of course, if you're allergic to this or that, that's making a big difference. If you are competing in <clears throat> Spartan races and you're doing long distance training and you're doing like really high level and you're like, I'm trying to get, you know, like single digit body fat percentage and like really, really um, next level goals. Awesome. This might ne not necessarily apply to you. But if you're like, God damn it, I just need to lose some weight and burn some body fat and feel a little bit more comfortable. Okay, cool. If that's you, I don't, your calories, how many calories you're eating is so much more relevant than what you're eating. So for example, <clears throat> I've had clients.
clients that came to me, you know, 150 pounds overweight and they said, hey, let's like real talk. What's what's for dinner? What's for breakfast? What are we eating? And it's like, well, it's fast food. It's McDonald's. It's Burger King. It's Dunkin Donuts. It's, you know, coffee, super high in sugar, fast food, food that is not good for you that uh, we generally want to stay away from. Now, if I ask this person who's like drive through McDonald's and Subway and Burger King and Taco Bell uh, and Krispy Kreme that eat the majority of their meals, I said, okay, well, here's what I need you to do. I need you to switch to broccoli and I want you to have some grilled chicken and I want you to have salad. And they're going to be like, see ya, right? Like that's not realistic for them. So what we do for that person is the same equation. I say, hey, where are you at? Okay, you're 250 right now? Cool. Here's the amount of calories I want you to eat. We'd say 225 times 12, that's the calories. <clears throat> where do you get those calories? I don't care. Get them from anywhere. Get them from Taco Bell, get them from McDonald's, no problem. Because next, guess, next thing they know, they've lost 10 pounds. Like, whoa, I lost 10 pounds, I didn't even, I just, you know, I went from the extra large fries to the small fries, cool. Here's your next, and I take them down the next one. They're still eating crappy food that doesn't make them feel very good, right? We know that food doesn't make us feel very good. It's certainly not good for us, but the amount of calories that they're eating is more relevant than what those calories are. So bringing that back to one of the earlier questions, like, well, what about cheese? Well, what about chocolate chip cookies? Well, what about banana bread, especially with chocolate chips? Like, you can have all that stuff. It just goes into your however many allotted calories you have right so you know if you get 1800 calories every day <clears throat> if 1800 calories is your amount you know just are an arbitrary amount 300 400 of those calories can be from from cheese no problem it can be from you know some chocolate chip cookies it can be from um it can be from a coca-cola classic if like you like have to have a coke like it can be those amount of calories aren't as important, um, again, as out how many calories you're actually eating. So you should be, you, and, that's, and that's another mistake, right? That like, number one, people drastically cut calories, they can't sustain it. Number two, they try to cut out all the food that they really like. And so then the new diet, you know, the new diet sucks because it's like, oh, I don't get to eat anything I used to like. And, you know, I can't go to my favorite restaurant anymore. And like, you know, my, my husband, somebody told me my husband's a cook and he makes great food. Like, that's awesome. Like, and their, their suggestion was like, I'm just going to give him a smaller plate. Like, I love that. That's perfect. Because you still get, you should still have that deliciousness. You should still have all the deliciousness. You just can't necessarily have all the deliciousness, right? Like, you can still have some. You can't have all of it. So, the 1800 calories can be made up of the cheeses and all the delicious things out there in the world. Like, that's a super important part. Because for those of you who know me, it's like, I have a big sweet tooth, right? And like, I eat, I eat healthy, you know, 85% of the time, but like, I still enjoy the things that I enjoy. And that's also the thing is like, this split, you know, if you can keep it, the pens are dying, sorry. If, of, your, of your calories you're coming in, if you can keep it 80, 20, like you're gonna be in great shape. Like you're gonna be able to sustain that. It's the people, that that I, I can be too rigid with it that it's like oh i'm not allowed to have this i'm not allowed to have that uh and then they can't stick with it because they're not enjoying the foods that they like now again if you have a food allergy or you're you know for me it's like i, I don't eat meat so you know it's like i 100 percent don't eat meat and my calories come from something else so if you're vegan or vegetarian like obviously those are the exceptions that you 100 percent don't eat those things that you might used to have liked but <clears throat> otherwise you stay within those calories so that's the big that's the really big takeaway i want a lot of us to have like right now we're at home and every single snack they ever made is in your pantry right so you can have all those delicious things you can have some of a little bit of everything you just have to make sure that total amount doesn't add up to more than you're allotted each single day and if it does cool no big deal tomorrow you just get back on track and you get back to your average and you get back to maybe a little bit below your average or at your average because guess what like it's over the course of your life. So if I have two or three shitty days in a row of overeating past my calories, no biggie. The next days I just get back on track and the longer I'm back on track, the more that average spreads out and I'm doing well. Does that make sense? Let's go. Uh, all right, I'm gonna scroll through here to see if I can find any questions anybody else has. 
Um, but drop a question if you have a question on the nutrition front. I want to get to every single one here. Okay, one of the questions is, uh, <clears throat> one of the questions was healthy snacks. Good, good call. So yeah, <clears throat> here's another interesting thing. You are about 300% more likely to eat the first thing that you see. You're 300% more likely to eat the first thing you see. So you open up the, that pantry, you open up your refrigerator, what's right there? That's usually what you grab for, right? So put the healthy stuff in the front, tuck the cookies and the crackers and the chips in the back so you're less likely to grab them quicker, okay? Um, Christine and I were chatting the other day about um, rice cakes. Like, I love these things. Like, they, they're maybe like between 30 to 40 calories per little thing. And for me, like, I need a crunch, like throughout the day, like, I need that crunch. And these are perfect, I can grab them, they have my caramel, they have a caramel flavor, they have apple cinnamon, which is my flavor, they have a chocolate one. They're super, I mean, you go nuts and you eat the whole bag, like, oh, you ate 300 calories. Like, it's, it's not that many, like, if that, and I doubt you could eat the whole bag. So, a little, I love the rice crackers, or the rice cakes. The other thing that I've been doing as well is, you know, kind of like late morning, I'll make a big snack plate for me and the kids. And, you know, I'll cut up some veggies and I'll cut up some fruits and there's some crackers and some cheese on there. And it's like, as we're grazing throughout the day, it's like I'm grabbing grapes and I'm grabbing apple slices and cheese. And it's things that are, you know, aren't super high in calories and that are going to be good for me. So that's another one is, is make, like, make yourself a snack plate. And you can put meat on there. Again, I don't eat meat. So you have some salami or Christ, uh, chop up some ham or, you know, whatever meats people eat these days. Um, and that can be a, a good alternative as well uh, for the snack plates. Um, let's see. So yeah, Suzanne, I think I addressed that is just chop whatever you're at calorie wise, um, you know, track yourself for a week to see where you're at and then also subtract, you know, 10 from your current weight and eat that many calories for a week or so. And I guarantee you, you'll lose, you'll lose weight and it's a sustainable approach that you can maintain. So just a quick um, clarification, um, because this is super important. Good food, bad food, <clears throat> healthy food, unhealthy food, um, uh, <laughs> evil food, <clears throat> you know, not evil food. It's all just calories, friends. It's all just calories. Nothing more. There, one food isn't necessarily good, and the other food isn't necessarily bad. I think it's really important that we that we provide that distinction because just we want to make sure that we're not can we're not telling ourselves we're doing something bad and oftentimes if we're eating something that we we've like clarified as bad food or good food then we associate ourselves with that decision right like oh i'm the type of person that eats bad food all the time i, I eat those totinas pizzas and top ramen like that's oh, bad food and who eats bad food well a bad person now you now i feel bad about myself and if i've convinced myself i'm a bad person I'm probably not gonna make the next decision that's gonna be helpful for me. So let's not value the food. I really wanna I really wanna encourage you to get away from that. Food is food, good or bad, it doesn't matter. It's just the calories, right? Remember we talked about the calories, what's more important. Some foods are gonna move you closer to your goals quicker. Some foods might take you a little bit further back because maybe they're heavier in calories, right? Maybe uh, they're heavier in sodium, and so you've got more salt in there, and you're retaining a little bit of water, and you're a little bit more sluggish. Foods are going to be more or less helpful for you. It doesn't mean they're good or bad, right? Like when I eat a chocolate chip cookie fresh out of the oven, I'm telling you there's nothing bad or evil about that. It is good in every sense of the word. So it's not good or bad food. 80% of the time, Rick, it's food that you know is going to move you towards your goals faster. And the other percent of the time, it's like, hey, it's like I'm living my life. Like I'm living my life, I'm dealing with some, some, some real shit in the world right now and sometimes I need this and that's okay, right? But really for you, it's just the amount of calories, right? And that 80-20 is kind of a good range to stay in, but it, most important is like, hey, what are my total calories coming in at?
Um, how to figure out if you need a snack or a meal. Yeah, totally. It's too early for dinner for sure. Um, another great suggestion that a client had of mine was like more like if you think you're hungry, like number one, boom, get down a glass of water and then tell you, tell me how you feel. Right. And then tell me how you feel. And if it's at four o'clock and you're used to eating dinner a little bit later, it's probably more of just a little snack and you might be a little bit hungry. Um, you know, it really depends on how, when have you exercised yet? How many calories have you eaten yet? And, and a great way to really know the answer to this question is how many calories are you eating totally throughout the day? Say it's 2000 and by four o'clock, say you've only eaten a thousand calories because maybe you don't eat breakfast and you had like a later lunch and then a little snack. So yeah, maybe you are legit hungry, but I don't know, maybe you've already eaten 1600 calories and it's like, like you've already eaten a lot. You're not really hungry. Your body's just, you're just kind of bored and you're probably thirsty and a rice cracker and an apple with a little bit of peanut butter probably do the trick. You know what I mean? So, you know, the right way to answer that question is how many calories have you had such thus far? How active have you been? And like, if you have that water and you have like a little snack, do you feel sustained enough to last to dinner? Um, quarantine margarita, whoo, my friend, my wife makes the best margaritas. Okay, so babe, are you on here? Crystal, can't really tell. If, uh, if she's on here, I'll come back, I'll come back and have her comment about what the recipe is because it's like, it's super good. Super good. Um, so yeah, scale versus non-scale. Good question. Great YouTube video of me destroying a scale with a sledgehammer, one of my favorites. Scale is good for some people. It's not good for others. It's a tool. Now, a hammer is good for some people and it's not good for other people's fingernails, right? Like a car is good for people to get around. It's not good for other people. A scale is a tool. If you have a negative association with it and it puts you in a bad place and it gives you anxiety to step on the scale because you're not really sure what it's going to do and the number is going to make you feel a certain way about yourself, ah, don't worry about it. But if you're going to use it just like you'd use looking at your bank account, like, oh, I've been spending too much money. I'm going to fix that. Or it's like, man, like, I'm doing a good job saving some money. Like, that's great. Like, you don't get mad at the bank account. You know what I mean? It, 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 the scale sh really should be the same way. There is no shoulds, right? Things are, they aren't. And, and if the scale gives you a negative association uh, with yourself or with, like, fitness, then I would say steer clear of it. But if you can use it as properly as a tool and go, okay, like, or there's some progress we make. Or, hey, I'm, it's a great way to show progress. Right? If you're tracking your calories and you're staying under and you're seeing that scale move, that can be super rewarding, right? It can also be discouraging to see it not go the same way. So how do you respond to feedback is like the best question. For me, like I love feedback. Like I, I love it. You know what I mean? Like I get, I get done with this stuff and like the best thing for me is, is somebody like send me a message like, hey, that was, you know, like here's my thoughts on, on that video. And I'm like, hey, what'd you think? And like it was good. I was like, no, 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 no. Like, Give it to me. Like, what sucked about it? How can I get better? Like, I, I, for me, I really crave feedback and I don't take it personally because like, I'm just like, I really want to get better. And so that's how I would approach the scales. Like, here's some feedback and this is giving me real time feedback on like what I've been up to. It doesn't really matter. And it's certainly not as important as how you feel, right? Like that's the best because if you feel good and your clothes are fitting good and you're confident, and you're healthy, then like, great, right? Like that's the number one thing. But if you're like, if your goal itself is to lose weight because maybe you're at an unhealthy weight, um, then yeah, the, the, the scale would help you know that you're making progress, right? So I would say for most people, as long as you're using it as a healthy tool to indicate progress, um, then go for it. But if, if there's some negativity around it for you, um, I might explore like where that might be coming from. Um, but also, you know, the, the whole thing with fitness, it's like, there's no finish line, right? Like once you reach 200 pounds or once you reach 175 or 150 or 135 or whatever your goal is, it's like, it's not over. Like a parade and balloons don't come. Like you still have to do the work. You still have to live your life. You still have to make sure you're eating responsibly and make sure you're exercising. So um, as, as long as the approach works for you long-term is the key. Uh, what's the next question? It's a good food option for right before a workout to help with energy. Uh, 
Um, food right before for you, I, I mean, you know, generally, I would, I would recommend a piece of fruit. Like I usually have like a little banana or um, like some fruit or some carbs, quick digestible that will get into you and get you moving. So, you know, half of some bananas, or I'm sorry, some apple slices, uh, banana, half a banana. I sometimes have like a half a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I'll have a little bit of a cliff bar sometimes. Um, it depends on how far, how long I'm going to be exercising. But usually a little something like that will give me a little bit. I'm, I really prefer to work out uh, a little bit closer to the hungry side than, you know, having too much food. So I usually don't eat too much. But, you know, a little bit of fruit, um, some quick carbohydrates can be helpful for you to kind of to, to get jump started if you need a little bit of energy. Um, cool. What else we got here? What else we got here? And after. Uh, snack for after, totally. If you once the workout's done, it's time to get the protein into the muscles, right? Whenever we're exercising, we're breaking down, we're breaking down a little tiny little muscle little connections, and we want to build those back. So if we get some protein in us, that's what helps rebuild our muscles, um, so that we come out of it stronger uh, and better. So get that protein in and afterwards. For me, I like to do a little protein shake, a protein smoothie. Um, uh, again, I don't eat I don't eat meat, so I'm getting my um, I'm getting it from you know plant based you know black beans and I do some fake meat patty stuff these days. So getting protein afterwards is going to be a great great. You can go back to the uh, uh, you know snack plate version, you know different things, or else you know maybe it's time for dinner and, and get it from a legit series. Also, it depends what time of day. If you're around the morning, I'd say time to get this breakfast in, right? Time to get the breakfast in, get some eggs in you, um, you know type of thing. Nope. Yeah, it is frustrating, Bobby. Uh, frustrating. So she said you know, it's frustrating to monitor the diet, be stuck in a plateau. Totally. Um, but it's part of the process, right? Like plateaus are totally normal. That's part of the body adapting. And it's body, it, you know, think of it as your body doing its job. Your body's doing its job. It's supposed to find the homeostasis and find that even spot. So, you know, celebrate your body for doing that. And then if you're in a plateau, which means you're, you're not going one way or another, something has to change. Something has to change. That's the way I look at it. All right, my body's done its job. Something has to change for me to see a difference. Maybe that's the calories. Maybe it's timing. You can switch things up. Maybe it's the exercise. But you've got to make an adjustment on one side, either on the fitness side or the nutrition side, to, to get off that plateau and give yourself that boost to go into the next side. It doesn't necessarily have to do with age. It uh, more has to do with, um, most likely, the amount of calories. So... Um, but I, I agree, I've been in plateaus myself and they certainly are frustrating. <clears throat> All right, so anybody else have any other questions? I think, uh, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I actually, I went longer than I did, which is great, or uh, longer than my original, original plan. Again, you know, big thing for those of you who jumped in maybe a little bit late is the, the amount of calories that you're consuming is more important than what calories you're consuming. So you can still eat all your favorite things. You just can't eat all of all of your favorite things. Um, and the second thing is, I encourage you, if you're looking to start to lose some weight and, and make some progress in, with, with losing weight or burning fat, then counting your calories for a week to 10 days can be a really good um, indicator of where you're actually at. So you can plan accordingly um, by chopping you know, generally a couple hundred calories off of what you might already be at because that's a sustainable approach and you can stick with that long term. Um, let's see. Oh, well, <laughs> inspiring. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm glad I, I'm going to keep doing this. Whatever you guys need, I'm here to help. Um, also, um, on Friday, I'm gonna do a special fitness challenge. Um, I'm gonna go live, do a workout. I was thinking maybe like, maybe like around noon or something on Friday. So we still have our normal ones, but I'm gonna throw an extra one in there that you can. That we I I got bumped off the schedule this week. Don't know what happened. Um, but I'm gonna do an extra one in there. Uh, it's gonna be a tough one, so that one should be fun. But um, you got it. Sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you. Um, and uh, you guys are awesome. I'm going to do this again. Obviously, we've had a good turnout. And uh, I know you know some folks won't have necessarily made it in. Um, but if you're watching this later on, 
drop your comment down below. I wanna, I'll come back in and, and answer any of the questions anybody has. And I uh, really, really appreciate you guys. And uh, remember, something's always better than nothing, right? If you, uh, <clears throat> if you run out of gas on the side of the freeway, you're not gonna just not put a little bit of gas in to go get more gas just because you can't put a full tank in. So even if you can't do a full workout, do 10 minutes, do 15 minutes, do 10 squats, do 10 push-ups, two or three times, that helps. It'll get you to the gas station. It'll get you moving. It'll be better than nothing, okay? I appreciate you guys. Champions do more. I hope we'll see you soon. Okay, bye.